everyone and welcome to Her Voice, a collaboration between LifeStraw and Outside Business Journal that elevates stories about women in the outdoors as we continue working toward an equitable future. I'm your host, Leslie Barrett, standing in for Denisha Jenkins. My guest today is Dr. Kim Hires. Welcome, Dr. Kim. Hi, Leslie. Thank you for having me. In case you don't know Dr. Kim, she's a leadership coach, speaker, and author who specializes in burnout prevention and recovery. So Dr. Kim, can you tell us a little bit about the state of burnout right now? So burnout is actually an interesting thing. So prior to the pandemic, anywhere from 30 to 60% of employees were in burnout. But recent data in the midst of the pandemic has come out and we're at 92% of employees in burnout. So the best way that I can describe burnout is it's a forgotten why, exhaustion, and loss of confidence. And historically, the majority of employees affected by burnout are women. And it's because we wear many hats. And that's what happened to me. You wear many hats. You are really driven. Usually, women in leadership positions are already high achievers. You have high achievers in an industry that probably wasn't designed for women to be in it, and you have a recipe for burnout. That's what happened with me. I was a high achiever, card-carrying high achiever, 110% with everything. And then life started to change. I got married, I became a mom, and all of a sudden I found myself losing confidence with the work that I'd spent a good portion of my life doing. You tack on the loss of confidence, I became exhausted. And it was a level of exhaustion that I couldn't sleep off. Like this was different. And then um, you add on top of that, just all of the different pressures from all of the different boxes that we check. And I found myself in burnout, sitting on my couch, just in a place I had never been before. And I didn't know how to get out of it. Hearing that 92% number really, that hit me. <laughs> that, that is what I've been seeing among people I know, which is why we wanted to have this conversation with you. So in an era of Google and WebMD, it's always great when you can chat with an expert. <laughs> so for those unfamiliar with burnout, how would you describe it? And can you share three signs that a person needs support? Yes. So burnout is a fascinating thing. It's not a new concept. The term has actually been around since the the 1970s, but the definition that we are most familiar with for those of us that work in the burnout space was developed by Christina Maslow. And then in 2019, the World Health Organization accepted that definition as well. Um, It's an occupational phenomenon. So even though we hear buzzwords about burnout, the real definition is that it's directly tied to your occupation. And it's the result of unmanaged chronic stress, specifically chronic work-related stress. And three signs that you are in trouble. The first sign is the exhaustion. You can't vacation it off. You can't sleep it off. You can't go to the spa or do anything. It is like wearing a heavy coat of armor all the time. And it's whenever you think about work, that's when you feel the weight of it. So that's how it differs from depression because it's not as generalized as depression. You pull the person out of the harmful work environment and they can recover. But so long as they stay in the work environment, then they experience the burnout, okay? The other thing that you look for is loss of confidence. So originally when burnout was first being researched, what they looked at was, oh, your performance change. But for me, I've been in coaching for seven years and I have been fortunate to work with some real high achievers in different industries. And what I can tell you is the scariest thing about high achievers and burnout is their performance will not change. They can, because they are so used to operating under such high pressure and they are highly resilient individuals, their performance doesn't change. It's their confidence that changes. They think that they aren't doing a good job. Their supervisors and everyone else around them will say something completely different. But when I get them in a room, when I get them on a call, 
they think they're falling apart. They think that they are failing at everything. So it's the exhaustion, it's the loss of confidence. And then the final thing is disengagement. If you are dealing with someone that historically they just seem to enjoy what they were doing, if you notice that they are checking out in a classic phrase is, I just don't care. That's usually a sign that they're in burnout because they are psychologically checking out, but it's not because they don't care. It's because they're in survival mode and they are at capacity. And it's not that they don't want to be uncaring. They literally don't have it in them anymore. Well, I'm going to not cry. That was, <laughs> that was resonated so deeply. <laughs> That's so much of what I've seen and experienced this year, like in particular. But to your point earlier, like before the pandemic, right? I feel like the pandemic has amplified so much of what already existed um, and is like making it unavoidable. And the burnout is a big piece of that. <laughs> yes, the thing about the pandemic. So while it is unfortunate, when you look at it from the perspective of, well, what did we learn from this experience? The pandemic was the ultimate black swan event. We've had black swan events before, right? World War II, World War I, 9-11. We've had those events before, but never on a global scale and never has every single industry been affected. And so for me as a coach, there's a part of me that gets excited when I see conflict or when I see tension, because I'm like, that's an opportunity for growth. That's where you need to grow. That's where you need to grow. So I'm looking at all of these industries, literally just go, ah, oh, this one's terrible. And I'm like, no, there are a couple things that came out of this pandemic. One, we've been playing leadership for too long. This pandemic exposed that we need real leaders in leadership positions. We were playing leadership. Two, it showed that the way that we worked was not sustainable. We're still using a factory model as though people are machines. And what this is saying, we have more women in the workforce than ever, particularly in North America. And we're saying that those, the way that we used to work, that doesn't even apply anymore. We were, we were burning ourselves out. We were working so hard. And at the end of the day, the thing that we thought we could put security in wasn't even secure. Right. In an instant, the way that we worked across industries changed in one week. Yeah. One week. Yeah. So that brings me to my next question. Do you have solutions for companies that they can implement? Because this is a systems issue, right? We often individuate it and say that you're burnt out, so you need to go heal, but really the system needs to change. So yeah. if there's anything that you have to offer for companies, that's who was watching with us today. So the interesting thing about burnout is it's 50% the individual and 50% organizational culture. So when the World Health Organization released its definition, the, the premier expert on burnout, Christina Maslach, or Dr. Christina Maslach, she offered just some gentle criticism about it. She said, be careful with making it an official diagnosis or going down that road. Because if you go down that road, then you put all of the onus of responsibility on the individual. But it's not just the individual. It's a combination of the individual and the organizational culture. There is only but so much a person can change in a, in a certain environment, right? If, if you put a cactus in water, well, eventually the cactus can only be a cactus for but so long. You have to fix the environment that it's in. It's not designed for environments like that. So when we think about work culture, the average human is not designed for current work culture. And we really need to take a step back as leaders. I'm really talking to the leaders because you are the architects of the culture. Everyone else in the organization is going to mirror what you do. So if you don't have boundaries, if you no longer find joy in what you do, you can't fake the funk anymore and hire for that. You're going to see a reflection of you throughout the organization. 
So this is where for leaders, I would say, this is the time to not shy away from leadership development. We are in the situation that we are in because of a failure of leadership, period. Really tap into that leadership development and take a hard look at the culture of your organization. Great. Well, lastly, um, you were able to figure out how to stop living like you were on fire. For those who are on a path to burnout or in the midst of it now, what ahas can you offer them? And how can we support our peers, friends, and coworkers on their journeys? Okay, so ahas. Don't make major decisions while you think you're in burnout. A brain in burnout is perceiving the world very differently. There's neuroscience behind it, right? Our brains were not designed to be bathed in stress hormones constantly. And so there are some effects that come with that. And what tends to happen is because our perception is altered, everything feels painful, right? And our first instinct can be, I want to run from the pain, but everything feels painful. So what I always encourage clients, try to heal in place if you can. If you can't, then develop a healthy exit strategy that's not going to be more of a burden. But what I will always advocate for is don't just run from pain. What is the lesson that you need to learn? For me, it was, I am not what I do. I can take this skill set and go anywhere in the world and do whatever I want with it. And no matter what I'm doing, whether it's being a wife or being a mother or being a scientist or being a coach, I'm still Kim. And learning to love Kim and discover Kim and recognize that who Kim is is not tied to Kim's performance. That was a huge aha moment. The other thing was I didn't need to set myself on fire to keep my organization warm. Mm. Every position has a succession plan. And for most high achievers, our 50% is the average person's 100%. And then the last aha moment was I gave myself permission to love the life that I had prayed for. I knew I was in trouble when I began to resent being a wife and a mother because it was distracting from the work. And that's something a lot of women don't admit out loud. And I remember when I was in my burnout, how bad I felt about feeling resentful, like, oh, if I didn't have to deal with this, I could just be doing this. And then it was like, wait a minute, but you've always wanted to be a mom. You've all, and, and my son is a miracle babe. And you've always wanted to be, you know, you married the man of your dreams what's going on? And that was a huge aha for me. And I say that, and I hope your, your viewers today get freedom in that, because I don't think enough women say that openly. They're afraid that they're going to be judged if they say that. I was very fortunate in that I had an incredible support system um, and really was able to lean on my husband. I did therapy. I saw a coach. I did whatever it took to learn how to rediscover who I was and take off all of that armor that I had built up for decades on this road to be successful and being a high achieving woman. And it was such a relief to finally take all of that off. Thank you so much for those insights. Hopefully we can take those with us as we all work through our pandemic burnout journeys together. And thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Kim. It's been such a pleasure having you. Could you let our audience know where they can find you? Yes, thank you for having me. This has been a wonderful conversation. I've had a lot of fun. Um, they can always find me at drkimhires.com. That's my website. Um, you can also find me on social media. I'm on Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And my handle is at Dr. Kim Hires. I keep it simple. They can also tune in to my podcast. 
Um, it's the Leadership Antidote Podcast. It's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all of the major podcast streaming networks. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you for tuning into this season of Her Voice. Shout out to our partner, Lifestraw, for making these conversations possible.